And I think it's important we not get too far ahead of our customers in talking about these things. It, it can be exciting to talk about where it can go, but it can also slow sales. If we look at where companies are investing, you probably can't read all those different sectors, but you can see that none of them except for technology are very big. Most of these sectors are not investing a lot in AI yet. And I had a friend who just closed his bot company, and I asked why. And he said, well, frankly, there are more bot companies than there are bot customers. So we have to be careful. This is an AI maturity level graph. And if you look at the bottom, 967 of the projects or corporations are working on lab projects. That's not good for us in the business. We need to move them up and get them more into building locations and strategic building, I'm sorry, applications and making it more strategic. So I have two suggestions for you based on three years of doing this. The first is solve real problems. Ensure that what you're bringing to market solves real problems of today. One of the products that we worked on at Wayblazer was a robot with IBM and uh, Hilton. Very interesting robot, a concierge. You could talk to it, ask it questions. It got tremendous publicity. Uh, we also did a similar thing for Marriott that was mobile. Interesting, but when it came time to do the budget, they didn't build any more of these. Now we're solving real problems. We're turning shoppers into buyers. Our whole company is focused on improving shopper to buyer conversion, putting real money in the hands of companies very quickly. And it's changed the tenor of our company and we're moving from lab projects to real business. And the second thing is make whatever you do very easy to use. We started with a lot of proof of concepts and companies have to start that way. But today it's all about APIs, right? We've cut our product into very simple to use APIs and we can get a customer up and running in less than two weeks. And that gets it into the stream, gets it into what they're doing and makes it real for the customer. It's very hard to predict the future for sure. So all I would suggest to you is don't simply recreate the past with these new systems. Reimagine what the future can be. Reimagine how these products can be created. To me, it's kind of like Chef Watson. And maybe you know about Chef Watson. I've done a lot of work with Watson. IBM created Chef Watson this way. It said, oh, sorry, it moved somehow off the slide. It, they took all the ingredients they could find. And they took all the recipes they could find. And they added a formula for what tastes good. And they charged Chef Watson with these parameters, this piece of software. They said, create new recipes. Don't make any existing recipe and try for something unusual. So combine these data in new ways. Don't create something that exists and try for something unusual. And one of the things it created was an Austrian chocolate burrito. <laughs> and I've actually had one of those and it's damn good. <laughs> it's surprising. And it, it created some horrible stuff too, but it created a lot of really interesting stuff. And that's you know, a crazy example that might stick in your head. Use these data to create your own Austrian chocolate burrito. Our friends at Cognitive Scale, our sister company is out front here, put together some interesting data. They took patient data. So they took uh, patient data about appointments. They took patient data about prescriptions. They took patient data about asthma. And then they took weather data and pollen data. And they put it together so that this kind of dashboard can come up for a caseworker and say, you better go see Jack. He's missed his last three appointments. He hasn't filled his last two prescriptions. It's going to be 100 degrees in Dallas tomorrow with extremely high pollen. There is a very high chance that they will call an ambulance and have to go in the emergency room. You should see him today and avoid that visit. That's a new recipe for data, giving someone a new answer, right? Or redefine, reimagine engagement so I can use a camera to take a picture of my car wreck and the insurance company can automatically do the claim or make sure that patients in a medical trial are actually taking their medicine by filming them every day, right? 
Yes, we can do things like this, and we are. So we can say, I want flights from Houston to Chicago tomorrow and give an answer. But why not try something much harder? How about I want a nonstop flight to London tomorrow after 4 p.m. in business class with an aisle seat and a lie flat bed? And boom, you get the answer. You can't even ask the travel agent that question today. The first thing they'll say is, what did you say? What day? We can do those kinds of things today. You can be like Luminata and put together patient records and articles and medical graph edges and Phoenix physician curation hours to find the cures for diseases. You can take pictures from satellites and perform economic analysis on retail sales in new ways. Yes, the taco bot is cool. And it's okay to have a bot that can order a taco. But can we do better? Can we do better? General George Patton, who was here in Europe during World War II, said at one moment, I am in exactly the right location with precisely the right instrument at just the right moment in time. That's where we are. That's where we are with AI. Exactly the right location with precisely the right instrument at just the right moment in time to apply to change the way consumers interact with this explosion of data. The confluence of the explosion of data, cheap computing, and the cloud allows us to apply these technology to real problems that customers have today. And if we do it right, we won't be talking about AI in a few years. If we do it right, the software and AI will be like the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland. The software will disappear, and only the smile will remain. Thank you very much. <laughs>